Hey guys and welcome back to the car of the day. I am Sam Crack and today's car of the day is the most outrageous I've ever seen. It's a 2011 Bentley Mulsanne complete with a guardrail that completely impaled the entire car from the front all the way to the rear. You guys have to see this. Let's jump right into the listing and check these photos out because it is totally unbelievable. This first photo is totally on rail, but before we get to all the photos, let's just go ahead and look through the details really quick. This car has a salvage certificate of title in the state of South Carolina with zero miles, not actual on the odometer. Obviously with that rail just going right through the car, uh, it likely destroyed tons of different electronics. I doubt there's even power to the vehicle at this point. Uh, an enhanced vehicle means, in my opinion, nothing. Some people argue with me on that. We'll talk about it another day. Uh, primary damage is to the side, really, once we see these photos, you're gonna see there's damage done all over this car. And the estimated retail value, one of the things I found most interesting, this car is only worth $131,000 in good condition, of course, with a clean title. That's what the estimated retail value is on Copart. But this car costs over $300,000 new. You're telling me that only in six years, it's lost almost $200,000. And of course, this one's lost a lot more than that. It's located at the Columbia, South Carolina Copart uh, location and it has no keys so we can't even try to start it up not that we'd probably want to do that let's jump into these photos and check this thing out these photos are absolutely mind-boggling but be sure to stick around after the photos because there's a lot of explanation behind this what might have caused it and actually the company that manufactures these guardrails had a huge lawsuit totaling in the hundreds of millions of dollars for possibly making an unsafe guardrail. We'll talk more about all that after checking these photos out. So what do you guys think? This looks to be like five or six feet long sticking out of the front of that car. Now obviously the car went front end first into this rail. It drove in, it basically impaled the whole passenger side of this car. Let's take a look at it from another angle. Just look at how much rail is sitting here. And this is obviously a big car. This would have been a total disaster and it's really kind of amazing. This didn't happen to a Kia, it didn't happen to a Ford, it didn't even happen to a Mercedes or an Audi, it happened to a Bentley Mulsan. Look at the front end of the car, the grill just pushed in. The hood actually looks like it survived because it struck the car low enough, uh, but the rest of the car is trashed. And this is where things start to get amazing. Look at the guardrail sticking out the rear of the car. And if that wasn't enough for you, we still can't even see where it ends. Look at how long it goes. Now the most breathtaking photos in my opinion are these, the interior of the car. Obviously these are the two front seats and look, it went right in between the passenger seat and the door frame. If you were sitting straight ahead in the passenger seat, you might have made it. And I'm wondering if since the guardrail entered first and just totally cut through all the electronics, whether or not there was no airbag deployment because of that, uh, hopefully no one was sitting there and it doesn't appear anybody was. Likely it would hit the uh, crash sensor first, then continue to go through the car. So I'd be hopeful that that dashboard airbag would deploy if someone was sitting there. As we know, most modern cars shut off the passenger airbag when nobody is, is uh, sitting in the passenger seat. Now check out the rear seat, which obviously the rear seat passenger wouldn't have been as lucky, but look at how close it came. It really hardly did much damage to the front seat, but that rear seat, it completely dislodged and it went all the way through, likely, through the trunk and through the end of the car. Here's the front end shot with it just sticking out. Like we expected, nothing even lights up on the dashboard when you get in the car. These electronics are toast. This car is a parts car with some extra scrap metal along with it. And basically, look at our final photo here. Look at where uh, Copart has this car parked. They've got it out away from all the other cars likely because it takes up so much space with that guardrail just sticking out of it. Now I tried to do a little bit more research on this car, find out if there was an accident record, find out sometimes with accident records come extra details. The accident record has not hit. I'd have to imagine at one point it will hit, it will stick on the VIN report, but right now we just don't have that. Uh, this gives us just very little information. I've never seen anything like this and just seeing these photos weren't enough. I had to find out more information. And it turns out there was a big lawsuit with a company by the name of Trinity Industries, a public company. 
and they were sued because their guardrails were deemed unsafe. This is not the first time an accident like this has occurred. There are several other photos, as we see here, showing guardrails impaling cars. A lot of the times these accidents are fatal. They're obviously really nasty accidents, but it turns out that Trinity Industries at one point changed the design of their guardrail. This guardrail has a flat plate at the end. The flat plate is attached to the actual rail itself, with something called a guide channel. And as you see here, this rail is not flat. It has some curvature to it. When you hit the flat plate, what's supposed to happen is that the guide channel that the plate is attached to is supposed to thread through the rail. The rail is supposed to bend away from the plate and it's supposed to move. That channel is supposed to move along with your car. It's been proven that when you stop instantly in an accident, of course, a bigger car or a bigger object that you hit stops you quicker, the force of that on your body is very dangerous. So this flat plate is meant to move along the rail as the rail bends away and goes away from the car until the car comes to a complete stop. As we see here in this diagram, it shows us very well. Now, Trinity Industries seems to be the main company that is manufacturing and selling these guardrails to the government, and they at one point changed the dimensions of the guide channel in the guardrail from five inches wide to four inches wide. Now, at one point, there had been a few of these guardrail accidents, not really a ton by any stretch, but a guy by the name of Joshua Harmon, who is a competitor to Trinity Industries, his company is SPIG Industry. They also manufacture and sell guardrails. Uh, he knew about the dimensional change in Trinity's product. So himself on behalf of the US government went ahead, sued Trinity Industries, claiming that this revision to the guardrails by Trinity Industries was only for cost savings, that they've done so, making it potentially very dangerous for drivers on the road. And on top of all that, they did not explain or get these changes approved by the government before going ahead and selling and installing these guardrails. Trinity's defense was that their update in design was just that, it was an update, that it was a better guardrail, that there was no other safety disadvantages to it, and that really they didn't have to prove that there was anything better or worse about them. They could just continue selling them and installing them as long as they continue getting the contracts. Initially, Trinity lost this lawsuit, costing their company over $600 million, and about $200 million of that $600 million was awarded to Joshua Harmon, the competitor company co-founder. Shortly after that verdict, Trinity appealed the case, and they won. The case was completely overturned. The courts were unable to prove that these new guardrails actually are more dangerous than the old ones that Trinity was manufacturing. Now, as I tell you, when we're doing live streams and we're looking through some of these salvaged cars or just loosely in some of my other videos where we're checking out damaged cars, each accident is completely different from one another. And it strikes me that if you hit this guardrail at exactly the right angle, I don't care how good, how wide that channel is, how angled things are, it's likely going to be a very, very serious and dangerous situation. Now, if you hit a guardrail head on, kind of like it's intended to be, it's likely going to do what it's supposed to do. That plate is gonna take the initial impact and then push its way through with the guardrail separating and bending off away from your vehicle. But who really knows? This was a kind of slippery case, like Apple and Samsung going back and forth suing each other. We know it's nothing new for a competitor to go after another one. But this is a five-year stock chart of Trinity Industries, trading around $50 a share. We can see right here towards the end of 2014, when this lawsuit hit, the stock plummeted from about $50 a share all the way down to around $35 a share. Now it's gone up and down since then and it's still only about $35 a share. Even though the case was overturned, it obviously tarnished Trinity's reputation. In an economy and a stock market that's grown rapidly since 2014, they've kind of just stayed stagnant, although they've had a little bit of a boost recently. I hope you not only enjoyed this car of the day, but also learned something from it, as I learned a ton while researching and making this video. Something that we didn't really think is possible on the roads is obviously 
out there. Now, if you see a car that's outrageous, or maybe just something you're interested in, maybe it's on Craigslist or somewhere out there in the world, be sure to send it to me for a possible car of the day. I have to thank Shane who sent me this Bentley. If you want to follow Shane, his Instagram is right here down below. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, as always, check down in that description box, shoot me an email and let me know. Thanks a whole lot for watching and I will catch you very soon.